good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So, this video here, man, TikToker beats her daughter to death and make TikTok dance videos weeks later. Um, probably gonna piss a lot of us off. You know, not probably. It is. It is. You know what I mean? Let's just be blunt about it. It, it is. You know, I can already feel myself getting worked up, and I ain't even seen... I don't know who it is. I, I you know, I, I don't watch TikTok like that, so I'm not familiar with I'm not going to be familiar with this person, but I could already feel like my blood boiling. You know what I mean? Anytime you hear beats daughter to death, yeah. It's not going to sit right with me. So we're going to check this video out, man. Um before we get to the video, if you're new to the channel, man, hit the subscribe button, join the fam, and um Moment of silence for the haters. That's enough. Now run the likes up, baby. And um, yeah, let's get to this. Mum, daughter, smiles and dances is what Nicola and three-year-old Kaylee Jade Priest would present to the world on TikTok. A normal mother and daughter having a laugh through the pandemic, trying to make most of what time they had together during lockdown. Once the cameras turned off, however, a grim reality away from the smiles would soon begin. What are we watching? Typical child being a child right now, you know? I don't really see, and I really don't want to see them show anything. Saturday. This is happening in 2020, it looks like the data is on this. Again, typical kid. I don't see nothing. Nothing too crazy right now. Either way, it ain't nothing she could have done that would be crazy enough for her to end up dead. What is going on? And mom only looks like she cares about her reflection in the mirror. What you've just witnessed is Kaylee Jade's last day out at the park before she would go on to be killed in her home by either her own mother, her mother's boyfriend, or both of them. She had been subjected to months of horrific abuse previous to this, and in that clip itself, police would come out to say that visible bruising could be seen and untreated bone fractures were present. Now right there, let's stop right there real quick. There is nothing that a child could do to where you need to bruise them you need to uh, abuse them. You need to beat them to the point of death. I don't care. You need to go somewhere and work on your patience. Now, do children work on your patience? Absolutely. Do they test boundaries? You better believe they do. Are they gonna, they, they're gonna pull you to the brinks of, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna, they're gonna do that. They're gonna test you. They're testing their boundaries to see what they can get away with period, point blank. But you as the parent have to be able to exercise restraint. You have to be the calm and cool person. Am I saying you're not going to get upset? No, I get upset. I get angry. You know what I mean? My children will tell you that. I get upset. I get angry. But it don't go past that to where it leaves them bruised or uh, dead or something like that. No, 
I would lose my mind if something happened to them. Anything that happens to them should happen to me first. That's what I live by. Those are the rules I live by. Anything happens to them, it should happen to me first. Period. Period. So, yeah, man, now, I, I don't want to hear the excuses or anything. There isn't none. You know what I mean? And they didn't ask. I always say this. They didn't ask to be here. So, point blank, period. You did what you did to have a child. Now, you need to become responsible and develop patience. But let's have a bit of a deep dive into this case and see what exactly went down on that summer's evening in the Kinghurst area of Birmingham. On the morning of the 9th of August 2020, emergency services had been called to Kingshurst House in Stonebridge Crescent. When both paramedics and police arrived at the scene, they found Kaylee laying lifeless in her room, and she would go on to be pronounced dead at around 11.25am. But first responders said something didn't feel right about this situation because a three-year-old girl with no underlying health conditions had just been found deceased by her mother and there was visible bruising. So they decided to call detectives to the scene. Once they'd been called over, Nicola would go on to be arrested so police could get her account of what exactly went down. And she was treated as a suspect because she couldn't explain what had happened to Kaylee. Police would let her go though, presumably on bail, and then a series of TikToks had been made. A tribute TikTok was posted with the caption, RIP my baby. 10 days later on the 17th, she can be seen crying and lip syncing the lyrics to the song, To My Parents. The lyrics go, I'm sorry, mum and dad. I know I messed up bad. Should have, should have done better. I'm sorry, mum and dad. This is more than likely a crocodile tear appeal though to her parents to say that she should have been a better mother. Cause it's not real. It's not real. I'm sorry, I just, I just don't feel it. I don't feel like it's genuine. I don't feel like, like, if, oh, if you lost your child, if you lost your child, are you thinking about doing TikTok dances? I don't even gotta hear your response to know you said no. I don't, I don't need to hear your response. I don't need to be next to you to hear it, none of that. I know it. No, you're not thinking about TikTok. You're not thinking about Instagram. You're not thinking about Facebook. You're not thinking about no social media platform. You're distraught. You, you crazy. You're trying to keep yourself from, from not doing something to yourself because you no longer want to live because your, 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 your reason for living is gone. You know, unless you got more kids and a spouse. So you're sitting there thinking, you're like, you trying to keep yourself from doing something to yourself. That You ain't worried about no TikTok. That's why I say it's not genuine, bro. You can't tell me that's genuine. Other. Four days later, another tribute post was made to Kaylee with the caption, I love you so much, darling. Mummy will never forget you ever. R.I.P. Angel. But then only one day later, the social media narcissist would post a TikTok's dance challenge video with the caption, way too serious, laughing face, dancing always helps me. One day later on the 23rd, she would post this video with the caption, love my makeup purchase, everything goes perfect. Seriously, bro. Really? You don't seem like a person that's grieving. And I'm not saying there's a timeline on grieving, but bro, a week, days later, you talking about your makeup goals? I'm just saying, it, it, would that feel genuine to y'all? It would not feel genuine to me. Not your child, not your baby. No, what it feels like is you're trying to capitalize off of the situation and trying to build a media presence off of the death of your child. And it's a special place in hell for people like that, bro. That would be the last video uploaded to her TikTok account, so we can presume a short while after this, the police would have finished their investigation, and Nicola and her boyfriend at the time, Callum Redfern, were charged with Kaylee's murder. You see, the investigation had been opened after the results of the forensic post-mortem. It revealed that Kaylee suffered a number of significant injuries to her chest and abdomen area. She had also suffered severe internal injuries during an assault, and was recorded 
as having small tears to the brain and a punctured lung. This was the result of heavy blows, possibly kicks or stamps, and a punch or a very hard slap to the head. Some of her injuries showed signs of healing and were dated back two weeks before her death, suggesting she had been a victim of physical abuse before. The injuries that caused her death were described as something similar you'd see as if she had been involved in a road traffic collision. And that, on top of other evidence including CCTV, would secure the charge that was brought against the pair. You see, the CCTV showed that both Nicola and Callum were present at the flat. The CCTV footage that you've seen at the start of the video took place on the 7th. Of course, they did leave the flat, but they came back, and after that, they didn't leave. Callum turned up on the 8th with a friend and would go on to leave at some point later, but police said the time frame that Callum was present is when the assault took place and ultimately Kaylee died, so the pair were charged. Both would go on to deny the murder charge, the lesser charge of manslaughter, allowing the death of a child and child cruelty, so a trial was held at Birmingham Crown Court in June of 2021. In court, it was heard that Kaylee had been subjected to a brutal assault at some point on the 8th of August 2020. Now imagine in your brain, a, a young girl, she can't even defend herself. See how beating her, she can't even defend herself. She can't alert nobody. She can't nothing. Now, if they're they're convicted of this and they they have evidence that they did this, bro, jail ain't enough for me. It ain't enough. It ain't enough. And I'm not saying what should or shouldn't happen. I'm just telling you it's not enough. Giving them some years just ain't enough. You had a child that was defenseless, defenseless, having to endure a beating by someone. I don't know who, but by, by somebody. And bruises ain't just get there, ain't just, just, she ain't just wake up and have those bruises. Nah, bro, time ain't enough but didn't die straight away. It's thought that if she'd been taken to hospital for treatment, there was a very good chance that she could have survived. But by the time Nicola rang for emergency services, she was already dead. The prosecution said that the catalyst to Kaylee's death may have been Kaylee interrupting Nicola and Callum after they were noted as spending, quote, time alone together in the bedroom. Now, although both of them were on trial for Kaylee's murder, they both tried to pin it on each other. Talking of previous history of abuse, Nicola would say that on one previous occasion, she recalls hearing Callum punch Kaylee, and on the day in question, she says that she went for a cigarette while Callum was putting Kaylee to bed. Within the time that she said she was gone to smoke. So, the dude you with punch your daughter, you still with that dude? Simple question. Vice versa, the girl you with punch your daughter. Bro, you still sticking with her? I ain't think so. Majority of us would be like, Nope, sit, it's a wrap. And they lucky I ain't try to kill. You know what I'm saying? Like I would be in jail. No, I don't care who you are, period. No, that, so, but, but who you believe in this situation now? The cigarette, she went on to say that Callum had smacked Kaylee for biting him while he was helping her put her pajamas on, although there was no visible bite marks on his hand. Callum would try and pin it on Nicola in police interviews, but ultimately he never gave evidence in court. But witness statements would give an insight to how Nicola behaved around her daughter. Take the testimony from her ex-boyfriend's mother, for example. Nicola had lived with her back in 2018. The mother would go on to say that at first, Nicola Nicola would call Kaylee a rat and a bitch, but as time progressed, she would give her, quote, the odd smack with an open hand on her arms and legs. A 17-year-old also gave evidence in court who sometimes helped Nicola babysit. She told the court that one month prior to Kaylee's death, Nicola slapped her daughter around the head twice in anger. The first time was because she asked for food, and the second was because she placed a blanket over her baby brother's face. In court, Callum's friend... A kid being a kid. That's why I started this out saying, if you don't have patience, then you don't need a kid, bro. Because they are going to test every patient in your body. Every bone of patience that you have is going to get tested. So if you don't have patience, you don't need to have children. That's something you need to think about. 
You know what I'm saying? If you can't deal with them at these times when they want to get be rambunctious, be rambunctious if I can get that word out. If they want to, you know what I mean, be off the walls and and do certain things or even when they get in school and they get in trouble or do different things, bro, you're going to have to have patience. And remember, weren't we all children at one time? You, you you show me a person that wasn't rambunctious, that wasn't all over the place or or didn't get in trouble, and I'll show you a liar as a kid. I'll show you a liar. We all was. And would go on to give evidence. Remember, this is the friend who turned up at the flat with Callum on the day of the attack. He would go on to say that he didn't see any violence take place and that, quote, the normal routine went down. But he did go on to say that after wanting to leave the property for quite some time and Callum not wanting to leave, out of nowhere in a hurry, he said that he did want to leave and so they left. The court was told of how Kaylee's room wasn't the best living conditions for a small child. There was no carpet. The mattress was dirty, and when paramedics entered the room to check to see what was happening, they couldn't turn the light on because there was no bulb. But although the prosecution couldn't pinpoint who exactly was to blame for the death of Kaylee, messages would show that both were just as guilty as each other. In a text message exchange between the pair on the 24th of July 2020, so just slightly prior to Kaylee's death, Nicola would go on to say, quote, I'm going to kill her because she keeps leaving the living room or going into the kitchen. So I've hit her and smacked her for shitting in her nappy. Callum responded, good, give her one from me. To which Nicola said, I will, babe. Three days later, Callum messaged Nicola saying, I'm going to keep that little brat away from me, sick of your spunking daughter. But after a trial at Birmingham Crown Court, both were cleared of murder, but were found guilty on the lesser charge of manslaughter. And Nicola was also found guilty of child neglect in relation to Kaylee's past injuries. For this, Nicola was handed a 15-year jail sentence, and Callum was handed a 14-year jail sentence. But once again, another story of how a parent has gone on to kill their own child. We have been going over some similar stories over these past few weeks. But the one person who Kaylee relied on to protect her ultimately would be the one she needed protecting from. I mean, even Nicola's own mother had contacted social services to tell them about the abuse that was going on, but it's unclear if any action had been taken. Nicola's mother would also give evidence in court against her own daughter in the hopes of seeing justice for Kaylee. I'm unsure why a mother would go on to abuse and kill her own child though. Someone she had carried for nine months just to ultimately put them through months of abuse which resulted in lots of injuries including 19 fractures to the ribs. I just don't understand how you could do that to anyone let alone a child and that child being your own child and instead of going out your way to put your daughter first it seems like you just wanted to abuse her and put a man first. Instead of buying Kaylee what she needed, a decent room, a decent mattress and food, Nicola, believe it or not, saved £900 out of her universal credit money for people who don't live in the UK or aren't aware of what universal credit is. It's basically welfare money from the government. And she used this money to buy Callum a car. But the thing is, Callum didn't even care for Nicola because on top of what he had been saying about using Nicola for sex, he took the £900 and pocketed 300 of that because the car only cost £600. But give the video a like for more crime related content like this and make sure you So it's one thing that he said that kind of stuck in there for me, you know what I'm saying? The person that that child needed the most was the person, I, I can't quote him what he said, I can't remember verbatim how he said it, but the person that child needed the most was the person that ultimately, uh, uh possibly allegedly harmed her so the person she needed was the person that that could have ultimately possibly allegedly killed her that's scary as a kid your, your parents are your superheroes they're your superheroes you know they can do everything that you strive to be able to do in your eyes you know and can't nobody can't nobody tell you anything different so, like, that, for me, that means something. 
you know, when when you when your kids are young and you know, my kids are getting older now, so I'm no longer the superhero, you know, I'm just the YouTube dad now. <laughs> but when they're young and you're the superhero, man, like I took pride in that. I took pride in that. You know, when they see you, you outside playing basketball and they can't reach the goal or they can't shoot the basket to the goal and you can or, or you can dunk it or whatever. They look at you like a superhero. My dad's a, a superhero, bro. I used to like marvel in that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I took that serious. The person she needed, her superhero, was ultimately the villain. It's not right, man. Rest in peace to that little girl. And um, if these two did did what this video uh, alluded to, then I, I ain't got nothing for them. No sympathy, empathy, nothing. Not nothing. Heart cold. Sorry. It is what it is. Y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know how y'all think. And um, stick around and stay tuned to the next reaction of my piece. Y'all stay solid. Hey.